This is Sarah, Block Editor. I'm here with Crasher, who is one of our new community council members. This series of interviews is designed to help citizens get to know their community council and community leads. So we're going to jump right into the first question for Crasher. First of all, hi, Crasher. What's up? Give us an intro here and start with your pre-crypto background and experience. Let us know how, how you got to the crypto world. Let's do it. Uh, I'll try to make it a little brief. It's bullet points. Um, I've done, I started in family business, just doing high-end audio equipment with my father and stopped doing that kind of in 2010 and then got into a small company called Fence Screen where I just hopped in. They needed a guy in production. Um, it was honestly a guy and a gal in the front and then I ran the production, started doing large format printing and we do screens for construction sites. Did that for 13 years, worked my way just from a, obviously the solo warehouse guy kicking back to the general manager. And then we just sold the company uh, three months ago um, for about nine figures. So it was, it's was it been an awesome journey, time to learn. Um, I'm not the most educated outside. So if you go to school or something, obviously you're probably much smoother speaker than myself and things like that. But uh, business wise, I, I really love business and kind of running a team is where I think I have a lot of strength. How I got into crypto, was just cruising through and then with the 2020 thing i actually weirdly collected uh trading cards like pokemon cards and stuff like that like i lost mine as a little kid so randomly when i would get bonuses over the years i'd like buy a card for nostalgia that i didn't have and be like that's cool it's fun and with the boom a bunch of cards cranked up and i sold a card in the beginning of 2021 for a really large amount and so i was never expecting to make that kind of money and then I used that to got one. It was a first edition PSA 10 Lugia from, it's called Neo Genesis. I bought it for $2,000 in 2018. I sold it for $100,000. So it was like, what the, who the hell? And as soon as I saw that, I was like, dude, you can have it. You can pretty much have whatever you want. <laughs> and uh, got into crypto. My first NFT was the uh, V Friends NFT uh, with Gary V. And then I completely missed all the riddles. I didn't do NFTs after I got that one, just held it, missed all the riddles, missed everything. And then I got into um, NFTs and everything at the very end of 2021, so December. And so I just had all that cash sitting there and I had some ether and stuff. And so I bought an S1 from Space Llama in February, uh, bought an Elite for... I think it was about 20 ETH I got an, an S1 Elite, and I was pumped. It was a four yield. Then his stuff kept going down. I was like, dude, I love this community. It was much less bitching than the other ones I was about, much more accountability, which I love. And so I just felt like, for me at least, for my personality, Neo Tokyo feels like my little uh, place where it feels almost like home digitally, where you're like, hey, get along with everyone. Everyone's shooting the shit. No one's bitching. If you do bitch, usually it just kind of gets blown over. And so I, I loved it. Um, awesome. Stoked for the opportunity. Honestly, just for to join the council, gone to the, the merch team and PRP team and a couple other things. And so I was trying to find more and more ways to help bring some value. So were you involved in trying to solve the riddles or did you I was never uh, on, okay. I was never on Twitter. I just just never I literally got the B Frank because I would listen to Gary B. Um obviously running a team, I kinda liked a lot of the advice and put it into my efforts at my office and we have a couple other locations. So it, it was very helpful to me. And so after him I just was like whatever. And I would watch Becker's YouTube, but I, I never went on Twitter and uh I, I think I hopped in. If anyone knows, you'll see me on Twitter. I have two different Twitters because I couldn't figure out how to get my original one. So I have a random one that I put together so I could try and jump in and keep up with stuff. Uh, but no, I was completely out. I got some S2s, paid way too much money for those two, and then got my S1 Elite and was like, hell yeah, that's where I got to be. Nice. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you spend most of your time working now, whether it's Web3 projects, outside jobs. You, you touched on a little bit, but where's your focus? Uh, still, my primary focus is with my career, which is at the company Fence Screen. Um, I'm still the general manager. We have three locations. Um, so I help with the production, the sales, a lot of strategy on how we're going to get to our goals and everything like that. That's still my primary focus. Um, Outside of that, I'd say free time. I still do trading cards and stuff like that uh, for fun. Like I'm a, I'm a collector guy. 
So if anyone's looking for like trading advice, just if you want to lose money, follow me and do my route. But if you're just other than that, I'm just like a hoarder guy. So I do that. And then I'm on Discord, you know, a couple times a day checking in what's going on, I'm trying to help with the merch team quite a bit. And now with the joining the council, very humbling. So once again, thank you very much, but want to put in my efforts and hopefully bring some of my business knowledge and experience in to help out with that. Awesome. Okay. Give us your strongest area of expertise for some citizens that are looking to ask questions to a lead or a council and uh, they want to know who to ask. What's, what's your expertise? I would say business management. Um, I'm great with with getting a team together. I would say community management and as they would call it in here, but it, it filters right into business. It's a lot of the same aspects um, in sales with the business coming up with strategies like that. I think that's where I can help out the most especially selling physical product and how to and how to market it to a community. Um, I'm helpful with that. Yeah, selling selling's a hard point. Um, you know, I don't do sales, unfortunately, but every time I, I kind of think of how do I sell this or that, um, it, it sounds like to an outsider, it's obvious, but um, once you start trying to sell, you you can be kind of lost. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, it, it, and it's fun. And I, I, I think that's where I come through is I, I really like to help people with understanding it because I think to many it is, maybe it's intimidating or or I think a lot of sales guys kind of get a rep of being arrogant. And I, I try to humble myself a lot. Like I'm happy to help any level just with trying to understand it. Because to me, it's a lot of just human psychology um, ben and I had a good call about two months ago with his company because he had some projects going on and just kind of strategies of to assess how someone's thinking and then trying to solve the problem. That's usually how I do everything is everything is present a problem to someone. Here's your problem. Let's fix it. Here's how you're going to fix it in the shortest, easiest way to do so. And if you can figure that out, then you can just it, it's taking pain away and everyone wants to do that. Yes, um, I agree. So what do you absolutely hate working on? I actually absolutely disappoint myself with my uh, lack of ability to put things together on a computer. So if you were like, hey, go make a, like Ben, for example, is amazing. I can see him putting things together all the time, organization wise and things like that. I'm awful. I'm great at talking and doing everything and making a plan in my head. As for making it legible for everyone to read physically or on a computer, I'm awful at it. I'm just, I don't know what's wrong with me. Maybe I have a I have some sort of deficiency where I'm like, dude, I cannot figure this out. So usually you'll see me outsourcing, like trying to talk to guys to help me with that. Awesome. Um, what have you done for or inside of Neo Tokyo or what are you most known for here? I'm not sure what I'm most known for. Uh, I, I joined the merch team. That was the first thing um, I kind of got into. I knew that. So how it started, I got the elite and then the, the bites were going down in cost when I got in and I heard the guy Fiji or something made some hats and then people were upset that they weren't getting it. Um, and due to me knowing how to source products for work and things like that, I just started making one-off items for people and just putting like a citizen ID. It was just like, Hey, I can make kind of custom and I'll sell it for bites. Cause I was like, I don't really have any bites. And I heard everyone, you know, that was the thing we had to get. And so actually Sarah, you were one of my first, and uh, so I was like, yep, I, I remember that's what I know you for the merch guy. Yeah. So I was <laughs> pumped on that. I was like, anyone who was supporting back then was, I was, I was having a lot of fun doing it. I was like, Hey, I'm actually trying to bring a little value and you can represent if you go somewhere, it's whatever. And, uh, and then I got invited onto the official merch team like two days before the store was launching. I didn't even know there was a store or anything. I was just doing one off kind of things. Not sure if that was uh, approved, but I was just doing my thing. And, uh, so I hopped in and then I was behind the ball a little bit. So luckily got to hop in with Tipsy and Firestorm and it was awesome. And then Meridian and I created the limited edition hoodie. And so that was a lot of fun because Meridian's a, she's a beast of a, a woman putting everything together. She knew the tech packs and taught me a lot. So how I know how to sell, she taught me much more on the other stuff. And I was like, this is so cool. And uh, so that's actually how I got into that and taking over I'm sure it'll come out after, but I'll be taking over the merch store in October. Um, so I'll run that with my team in here. It just kind of helps some things speed up and get some additional materials going through. Because I think I dropped the ball with a, a slow turnaround after that when we were supposed to have more limited stuff. And 
drop it. And I was like, shit, now I got to pick it back up. I got to earn it again. Um, but to get back on track outside of that, I've helped with the event last year for the one year anniversary. Always happy to help if anything comes up like that. Um, I'm on the PRP core team and then now in the council. Uh, but now as I, I guess I just blabbered forever. I'm probably most known for the merch guy. You, yes, I, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and say you're the merch guy. <laughs> Um, why did you want to join the lead, the council? Honestly, I'm a big fan of, I don't want to bitch about anything. So I don't think you can complain or not like how things are going unless you're actually putting an effort to adjust it. And so what I wanted to come in was to just bring an additional perspective. Um, I don't think I'm the smartest guy in the room by any means, but I know after 13 years of working through a business and I understand many aspects of it that I think I can bring in some knowledge to help with different areas. Um, and so I just wanted to jump in and hopefully I can bring in some, you know, good thoughts here and there and maybe help with some execution. So if something goes through and we need additional hands on it, I want to come through and put in my effort. I'm i uh, I'm not a guy who bitches very often. So just want to make sure I'm accountable to get things done. I love it. All right. Um, which one word do you want people to strongly associate with you? Originally, we were going for, you know, a word business like, like marketing or, you know, coding or something like that. But we've gotten a whole gamut of answers and, no, and a lot of people are using describing words. So give us your one word, whatever you want. I'm going supportive. Um, that's what supportive. I'm sticking with. I, I kind of came off fresh on the last one and that's what I want to be known for. I want to be the, I like the lead in the aspect of, pushing people forward, like trying to help them succeed. So supportive would be my, that'd be my word. I like it. I like it. Okay. Last question. And we kind of blew right through these. So we've got, we've got plenty of time. Tell us a little something about you that others may identify with like hobbies or outside interests. I would stick with probably motocross. Uh, I race dirt bikes at like an amateur pro level. Um, and that's what I love doing. I had, everyone probably knows race for the win. And he and I have hung out a couple times. He has weirdly, his father lives right down the street from me. Um, so we've gone there. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was a weird coincidence. And so he flew down and he races. He used to race street bike actually professionally. Like he's a badass. And then, so we go, didn't go out. You're like Neo Tokyo talk and then motorcycle talk. So probably motocross dirt bike going to be my thing outside of that. That is a weird thing. It's just that I'm the Pokemon card collector guy. So doubt many people are going to guess that one motocross and pokemon cards uh -huh. I, I love it i think it's a good it's a good one and it's good to to find something to relate i know race for the win um i went to him when i wanted to get an elite and he was so amazing and so helpful and just why and i had been in neo tokyo long enough to know how to do it but i was still uh -huh. lost and i was just like i'm just gonna ask him what to do and he fixed it all up and made all these combinations and stuff for me to look at and it was Flawless. I loved it. Great experience. 100% agree. That, uh, that all right. man is a, a beast. Yes. Is there anything else you want to add for citizens to know? Um, no, not really. I would say uh, I, I just want to come across. Um, if, if anyone has questions or wants to reach out, always feel free. I don't, I don't care what's going on or if you just, whether it's merch or something for your own project or whatever it is, I want to be an open open door to people who, if they have questions or have needs and think that I can help them, just ask me. If I can't help you, most of the time, I'm part of the PRP team, so I will get you to someone who can. I try to network pretty pretty aggressively and in Neo Tokyo, as well as a couple other um, communities. So anything comes up, feel free to hit me. Uh, I'm never gonna be a dick about it. Amazing, that was Crasher one of your newest community council members. This recording is going to be somewhere available online as well as an article and a little cheat sheet on Crasher so you can get to know who you need to reach out to on the Neo Tokyo community leads and council members. And that's all we have for today. Thank you, Crasher.